everybody. Happy Thursday. Oh, this is Thursday. So we're going to be doing some, um, we're going to have some fun with the Luminaire today. I thought it'd be fun. Oh, just like, let me get my comments up here so I can see. How is everybody today? So we're going to do, um, so <laughs> the other day I came in get to get ready for Shields Live. And by the way, you're just going to get me today because Tim was in Davenport, but he thought he better, because of the weather, get back to West Branch. So he's on driving right now to get home. So, um, but the, so the other day I came in to do this and I was going to do something in the third upgrade, but then I realized our machine doesn't have the third upgrade in it because they, they haven't come in yet. So, um, so I decided to use something out of the second upgrade. So this is going to be a, um, this was in the Luminaire XP2, or if you had the second upgrade, and this is going to be um, the little function that works with these little round, these little half inch stickers with the little round targets on them. So what it does is, is it makes the machine stop in a certain place and it works really well for like, um, like, uh, putting binding on and that type of thing or doing decorative stitches because you can make the decorative stitches, um, elongate slightly so that you can finish at the end of the stitch cycle. So, um, anyway, so we're going to play around with this a little bit. I'm going to show you how this works and it's real easy. Um, but this was in the second upgrade for the, um, for the Luminaire and the same concept works with the dream machines and destinies and also the like, um, sewing machines with the, that had the pens. So, um, they, some of the same things are similar to that, but you use the little pen instead of the stickers. Okay, so the stickers work with the camera function or the projector function in the machine and the other machine or the other cabinets or uh, cabinets, the other machines um, had the little the little pen feature so that it's kind of the same kind of concept as that. So, so this was in the second upgrade, okay? But Tim wanted me to tell you he's having a little special. A lot of people have been asking about this. So let me turn my little banner off here just a second. Okay. And so people have been asking about this book. So this is the new book that Baby Lock has. It's called um, Mastering IQ Designer, which is the same as um, Design Center in the Luminaire. So IQ Designer is the Baby Lock version of Design Center in the Brother Luminaire. So th this book would work with either one of those. And it's a book of projects that show you technique and you can make projects in your IQ designer or your design center. Okay. So this is kind of a neat book and he's going to have a little special because he has to do an order for baby lock. So these, bo these books are 20% off and right now, and they're normally $249, but then he's going to do 20% off on these. Okay. So, um, Anyway, so if you're interested in this book, it's called the So Ed IQ Designer Mastering IQ Designer Book. Okay, so he's going to order a few more. And I see Garnet's on here. Garnet, by the way, yours is here. So if you didn't see my email, it's here. <laughs> it's here at the store for you to pick up. So, but anyway, so he's going to order some more of these. So if anybody's interested, if you could personal message me or you can um, don't comment on the the. Uh, um, video because it's a little hard for me to find those. So if you could email me or personal message me through Facebook, that would be easier. Okay. So this is the little special that we're doing is this book. And it is really cool. It's got a lot of really nice projects in it. I think I counted and there was like 20, 20 some projects in it. And they were, there was a big variety. So anyway, this is the new, one of the new things that's come out. Okay. So that's one of the, one of the things he wanted me to show you. Okay. So let me go ahead and get my camera turned down here. And we're going to learn about how to use the endpoint. It's called the endpoint feature. Um, how do they, what do they say technically? This is my little manual over here. So let me switch my cameras here and uh, the microphone. And then we can look at the sewing machine. I always have to find the right microphone. There we go. Okay. So hopefully you can hear me. All right. So this is the little manual that I that I printed out with my upgrade. If you have an XP2, 
it would have been in the book as like in a little addendum, but I had the upgrade because I have a one. And so what this is called, it was in the, it was towards the beginning of the this information. It's it's specifying sewing the endpoint. So it's sewing endpoint function. Okay. So what it's going to do is going to make the machine stop. So I, I called it endpoint sewing function on the brother, brother luminaire or the baby lock solaris. So we're some both. Now I did want to tell you that that when there was the update on the machine, when that came out, there was also an update for video. So they do actually have a video on this that you can go watch if you need to. You can watch this video, of course, but you can also watch the video on the machine. So if you touch the little icon up here that looks like a, a film strip and it's under video and it's going to be under the sewing function so this is a sewing thing and then it's the last one down here on the left hand side you can see the little polka dot sticker here and you touch that and then that will bring up the video on this particular function okay yeah the, the little the little stickers you know i haven't really used them a whole lot and I have a couple friends that use them all the time, but this is the little video then that's in the machine. So if you need to go back and reference it, it's right on the machine. Or if you can't find the, this video, hopefully those of you using YouTube and Facebook can find it. So, but I wanted to show you where that was. So you hit the little film strip and then the video tab. And then in here, it's under sewing and it's down here towards the bottom. We're also going to use the laser light a little bit today. So some of you may not have used your laser light much. So we're also going to use the laser light. Okay. So I wanted to show you that first. I wanted to show you the little video. Let me get back to my home screen here. And I'm going to go to my sewing. So I'm going to be, we're going to be sewing today instead of embroidering. So I'll show you what I did. I did a couple little test patterns. I've just been playing around with it so I can kind of see how it works. And so here's some of my little decorative stitches that I ran along and I used my laser light to help me get them straight. I didn't draw my lines straight, but the, the rest of the stuff looks pretty straight. Okay, so I just played around, but then this is the little sticker. Okay, so I'll show you a couple ways to use this. And it's kind of fun because you can use it with decorative stitches. Okay, so let me see, I've got some, I got some fabric up here that I drew some lines down. I just took like a, um, like my heat erasable marker and just drew some lines so that we'd have something to follow. And then, so let's pretend that we're doing some decorative stitching on like, um, like a blouse or maybe the bottom of a little child's skirt or something. And we had a certain place that we want things to end. Okay. So what I did is I just drew a couple of straight lines and then I drew a line where I wanted it to end and these will all iron off. Okay. So, Let's bring out the instruction. I like the instructions because these are actually pretty good. So I don't need this page. Um, and I am going to be using, so be careful of your foot while you're doing this. So depending on the stitch you choose, you will it will tell you what foot, remember, on the machine. So we'll look at the stitch I chose to make sure we have the correct foot on. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose the stitch I want on my machine. Okay. So I'm going to go and I'm going to use a decorative stitch. So one of the character decorative stitches, I'm going to click that tab first. And the one I picked was in, let's see, tab number nine. So the, the tabs are listed up here. Okay. So it's in tab number nine and it's number nine dash seven one. So it's down here a little ways. There's a whole bunch of decorative stitches in here. And I just picked this one because it was something that was in the video that I thought um, would be easier for you to you know, visualize if you went and looked at the other video on the machine. So that's 9-71. So here's that. So I'm going to touch that one. Sorry, my fingers don't always work. So I'm going to look over here and it tells me that I need the end foot on because this is a decorative stitch. So I do have my end foot already on my machine. So we will use another foot later. We're going to use the J foot later and when we do the last part of it. Okay, so um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to check, there's two ways to use this feature. So there's one way, so let's, let's say that you are doing um, your decorative stitching like this, okay? And you've got space on both sides of where your decorative stitches is gonna be, your stitch is gonna be. 
um, the, and you can put your little polka dot little sticker that we're going to use in a minute off to the side. That's one way. The other way would be, let's say that we're doing um, binding on something and we have to stick our sticker right where we're going to be sewing. So in that case, we need to remove the sticker before we start, we stop the sewing procedure. So there's two ways to do this. So the next thing I'm going to set up after I've chosen my stitch, I'm going to go back to my settings page up here. And there's a there's a setting in here and it's on page three that tells the machine end point setting temporary stop. So in the first procedure we're going to do with the decorative stitch, we don't need the machine to stop because I can put my sticker to one side or the other so I won't sew through my sticker. If you think you're going to sew through your sticker, this needs to be on. And in this case, I'm going to leave it off this time and then we'll turn it on for the second part of this. OK, so this is I'm going to leave this off and click OK down here. So it's on page three. So if it's on the two, this allows the to you to affix your sticker at the beginning, and then the machine will stop a few inches before you get to the sticker and have you take it off. All right. If it's off, the machine will just continue to sew. And in my case, on the first couple um, samples, I'm going to put my sticker to the side. Okay. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on our laser light. So how many people know how to turn on your laser light? So there, here's the laser light up here, and it looks like kind of like a first base with a line on it, okay? So sort of like home plate <laughs> and a line on it. And we're gonna touch that one. And I'm gonna turn on my laser light. Now, there's two halves to this laser light. So it's off or on, okay? And there's a main and a sub. So I'm going to leave mine, I think I'm going to leave it as red because for what my fabric, I think it'll show up mostly. It's a little hard to see on the camera, I apologize, um, because it's a, like a camera looking at a camera and sometimes it's a little hard to see it. So I may turn down my light a little bit to see if you can see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my main one on, but I'm going to click the sub tab and I, I am going to turn off my, my sub that, so you can have two different laser lights. I'm going to turn mine off for the sub. I'm just going to use the main one, okay? And then you have the choice of a long, a medium, or short line. You can have a green, a white, or a red line. So there's a lot of different options available here. And then what I'm going to do is if you look at my design here, I couldn't figure out how I would keep it straight. And in this case, this one kind of has a line that runs along the bottom of it. And I'm going to run my laser light along that along my line so that they set on my line over to the right. So does that make sense? So I was kind of looking at this particular design, how it's formed. And I want to I'm going to use my laser light over here so you can change your laser light position with these buttons here. So in this case, so if I had this one at zero, okay, so when normally there, I had set this yesterday, so that's why it's still there. So if it was set at zero, see how the laser light would, is right here? But I don't think I could keep it straight that way. So I'm gonna move my laser light so that it matches up with these lines right here, okay? So then I know I can put it on my line. So I'm gonna move this over the sideways. I'm gonna move it over. And I think it ends up being about 3.5. I just moved it over till I got it to the bottom of the, my little decorative stitch here. And so it's 3.5 millimeters, okay? So we're gonna leave it there. And then my line, I'm gonna run my laser light along my line here. And then the, the stitch is actually gonna form to the right of it, okay? You can also do that. And there's also a mirroring function. So you could actually, if you wanted it to be on the other side, you could just take the, there's a little mirroring button. I'll show that to you in a minute. And then you can mirror it the other way and do the same thing. Okay, it depends on which way you want it, but we're going to do it on the right this time. Okay, so we got that. So we got our laser light turned on. We got it set up where we want it. We're going to hit close on that. And now we need to get into the the stop feature. 
the stop feature is in this little button up here. So this, I think maybe, no, I'm sorry, that it may not show too well here. Let me turn the camera just a little bit. It was kind of underneath the little StreamYard button. So this little button right here up in the top right-hand corner, right under the house, oops, that's not what I wanted, right under the house, you're going to touch this one, and it's going to get you into more of your sewing functions here, okay? So that remember that mirroring I told you about? This is the mirroring. So watch it on the screen. If I touch this, it would go over the other way. And then I would need to move my laser light over to that side. All right. So I'm going to leave it the way it was. But if I go all the way down to the very bottom of this, there's a little button right here that looks like a circle with a line through it. And that's what we're looking for. So I'm going to touch that. And it's going to open up here. So the next thing on here is endpoint setting. So what that is, is if it's on or off, there's a blue line that is like horizontal to your, to your laser light. So there's a blue line that would be like this. That's on. I'm going to leave that on just so you can, you can kind of see then when you're getting close to where you're going and you can kind of tell if you're straight or not. So I'm going to leave that on. And then there's a couple ways you can adjust this. So let me pull this down just a little bit. Um, there are, here's your decorative stitches. So depending on the decorative stitch, you may just want it to stop wherever it stops in the stitch. That would be the first button right here. And what it does is it just stops at the end of your line where you tell it you're going to stop, but it doesn't try to make you finish that particular stitch cycle okay so that one we'll try that one first and then the second one is actually going to finish the entire cycle of the stitch so it's going to end it at the at you know at the end of that stitch so you'll see that they look very different when you do them okay so let's start with the one that it, it, we're just going to end where we want to end and that's it okay so it's not going to complete the pattern on this one but it will on the second button all right all right so and i don't know if you can see let me see if i can turn down sometimes if i turn down my lights on my machine just a little bit let me see here i may have to go back and do that again because i have to get into my menu i think i can turn my lights down and you might be able to see the laser lights just a little bit better let me find my lights here I always have trouble with finding all these settings. Here we go. Light. Let's just turn it down just a little bit. And you might be able to see the lights a little bit better. Oops, I don't want to turn them off. I think I want just a little light. Okay, let's try that. And then I'm going to go back in, get my laser light turned back on. Okay. Yeah, I think you might be able to see it a little bit better if I dim it a little bit. Okay, get that on there. That's good. And then I'm going to go back into where I was. Okay, so now we have our little endpoint setting up back up here again. We're going to just do the one that does not, we're, it's just going to stop where I tell it to stop, but it's not going to complete the pattern. Okay. And if you can see over here, and it's probably very faint, but there's like a bluish line that's horizontal right here and that's the like the starting line or the stopping line and then here is my laser light right here so it's a little if I turn tip it this way you might be able to see it it's just a little hard to see the laser lights on here and then remember when we got those second upgrades we got all these little stickers all these little these little half inch stickers there's a whole bunch of them okay so that this is what these are for we're going to grab a hold of one of these little stickers they're half inch like this, and they have a little polka dot in the middle of them, okay? And what I'm going to do is it tells you in here, I'm going to turn my page so I don't forget my measurement here. You need to put your, your sticker in within about an inch or so or an inch and a half of your line, if, like where you're going to be sewing. If it's too far away, the camera won't be able to read it. So it says in here, approximately an inch and a half. So on this particular one, I don't have, you could put it right here and then you could stop the machine 
to let you finish. But I, I know I have enough room on my fabric. I can put it over just a little bit. So I'm going to put it over and there's a line. I don't know if you can see it. There's a, a heavier line here. That's what I'm going to put on the line because the polka dot is the center. And that means that's where we're going to stop it. Okay, so I'm going to put that over about an inch or so. And I'm going to put that dark line right on the, my ending point where I want these to end. I'm going to stick it down and make sure they're stuck down really well. Like that. Okay, so there's my, there's my little polka dot. And I marked some lines on my, like I said, my fabric just to give me something to focus on so that I would, um, for, the, for the sample. And then here's my polka dot. Now, the, tr the trick is here, don't put your hand over the sticker. Because the first time I thought I had my hand over there and I put my hand over the sticker, well, then it couldn't see it. So make sure you don't stick your hand over the sticker, okay? And this part here, where we set this all up, leave this open on your machine. Don't close it, leave it open, okay? So we've got that all open. We've got it all set up the way we want it. So let's try this and see what happens. Can you see the little blue line up here? So there's like the starting line. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put my laser light right on my blue line here. And, I'm, and I don't guarantee that I'm gonna be a perfect straight sewer here, okay? All right, so we're gonna drop the needle. I gotta find my foot controller. And then we're going to sew out that, that little, like that little curvy pattern. And I'm gonna leave my laser light on my line. You probably can't see it now because it's on the blue line. I can see it real well. I've always wished that the laser lights would show up better on the cameras. They don't very well. Okay, so now, did, can, did you see this blue line right here? See how the blue line kind of showed up all of a sudden? It sees that, poke, it sees the little polka dot sticker. And I'm just trying to keep it as straight as I can. I'm letting the machine sew. And, you know, and of course, it's not going to hit it because we set it over a little bit. And also the machine stopped. Did you notice this machine slowed down a little bit, back a little ways? Okay. So now I'm going to click, I'm going to click my cutting button and look. So here is where we started. We ran it along the line and it ended right on that line right there. And this one we did. And it did actually end up being almost completely set um, with a full with a full um, design because actually it did go it did, it did go a little bit past that. So let's do the other one and see if it does it the same way. And we may do a, I've got another piece of fabric. We can try another sample. So remember we had this is the one that it was just going to stop where I told it to stop. This one's going to stop at the very end of my design. So this one actually kind of did end up um, ending about at the end of the design. So we're gonna try this one and see what happens. And then we may go back to the other one and see if we can get it to look different. All right, so let's try, we're gonna try this other option. This one's gonna do stop at the end of the design itself. So this is a really cool little fun feature to play with. I had never really played with it much and it is really cool. All right, so now we're going to take our little sticker over here. Now you can put the sticker on the right or the left. They recommend the left if you can put it on the left. You, I did do a couple on the right and it was fine. It worked fine. But again, it needs to be relatively close to your stitching line. So I'm just going to put mine over here. The solid line is on my line. Okay, I'm going to push it down, make sure it's good and stuck down. And then let's try this one. So this is the one that's gonna finish the entire design. My other ones, let's see, here's my other sample. So like this one here, it must've been where I started on the fabric, but the one that I did like we just did now here was the one that was not, was just gonna stop wherever I told it to stop and see how it only did half of it. And then it stopped on the line. And then this one did the whole thing, all right? Could you do that? Yes, yes, Shannon, you can. Um, yes, you can. And you could use the mirror image button. Yes, you can. So I didn't, I showed that in a little, a little bit ago. If you go back and watch the video, you'll be able to see that mirror image button. Okay. So yes, you can. 
All right, so let's try this one and then we may try a third one just to show you how it might not come out even at the end. I think we lucked out and it sort of came out even on the first one. This one's supposed to, because I set it up. So remember, don't stick your finger over the sticker. I have to be real careful not to stick my finger over it. That's kind of where I put my, my hand when I'm sewing. All right, so there's the blue line because it's, it's fine. And then it's going to slow down here in a minute. Okay. Now, did you see it here? It slowed down because I didn't let my foot up. It just kind of slowed down on its own. But it's not going to stop. It's just going to go and it's going to end. But what it does with the full, doing the full um, design, what it does is it may slightly elongate the design so that it finishes where you want it. Now this one was, I think we just lucked out with this one. See how it actually finished it? And so did this one. But this one actually went just slightly past. So let's try another one and see if we can get it to do just like half of one. I had some different sizes of fabric. So we'll try a third one and see. We'll go back to that other one that it doesn't elongate. So what this one does is sort of elongates the pattern so that it will come out at the end of the pattern. Okay, I think we just lucked out with this one. So let's try another one and see if we don't luck out because I didn't on this one. You can see how there's only half of it. Okay, so let's try another one, see if we can get it to do that. You know, only when you're live that things don't work like that. So, you know, I just lucked out this time. Okay, so let's try another one. So I'll bring this down. I still got some, my lines here. I'm gonna put this on again, down here keeping it within about an inch and a half of my line and out of the, the way of my sewing. And I have it set at the um, setting that it will not finish the pattern. So let's see if we can get it to do it. Let's see what happens here. So you can see the difference a little more clearly. All right, so let's see if I can sew straight again. And you can use this with most of the designs. There are some designs that it will tell you they won't work with it. And so most of the ones I've tried, it will, this, this procedure will work. There are a couple and you may get an error message if it doesn't, it'll just tell you to pick a different design. So this, let's see what this one does. Okay, so this one, yeah, so this one's going to just end where it's going to end, but it didn't end at the end of a pattern. So then you'll see it. Better. Does it matter what color the ink, line ink color? Oh, no, just whatever you can see, Shannon. Mine, I just happen to have a blue um, marker. So Jan didn't do very well sewing straight, but you get the idea. But see that how this one stopped in the middle of a pattern. Okay, and then the other one, if I hit the other button, that one will elongate the pattern. So we'll do it again so you can see that one because I had a couple pieces of fabric. And it will elongate the pattern. Can it turn a corner and continue from? Um, yes. So the next procedure we'll do, Colleen, it will show, I'll show you how. So basically, I'll show you how to put on binding with it. So that's the next thing I'll show you here in a minute. Okay. So yes. Okay. So then we're going to get a hold of this if I can. And then this one's going to elongate that pattern so that, and I'm going to show you that you can put it on the right. So let me put this on the right. But see, our, our stitching is going to stick out here. So it, it is a, actually for this one is easier to do with on the left, but it will work over here. It just needs to be over far enough so that the stitching won't hit the sticker. So, but I want to show you that it does work on the other side. Okay, so let's do this one. Let me get my instructions out of the way. And we'll do this one. Okay, got it all lined up. My little blue lines up here to help me. And I got my laser light on. But they do recommend putting the sticker on the left if you have the room to do that. Now I used to use my my little pen feature on my luminaire or on my dream machine quite a lot. 
And the next thing I'm going to show you is what I used it for so much because I put a lot of binding on. And then that's what we're going to do with this next, the next part. We'll pretend we're putting binding on. And you notice it slowed down again. So when it gets close to the sticker, it slows down. And this one is stopped and elongated slightly or squeezed slightly to stop at the end of the pattern. So this one stopped off the pattern at the end point that we wanted, but then this one stopped at the end of the pattern. So that's the difference between those two buttons. So does that make sense to everybody? And so, yes, I am going to show you, we're going to put binding on. So I don't have any binding to put on, but you'll, you'll understand what I'm doing. We'll just use the fabric and we go around it. So I have to get my sticker. So what's cool about these stickers, I'm going to find the, okay. So the next, the next section is the temporary stop. So when you know that your sticker is going to be in the way of your sewing, like on binding, for instance, then you need to make the machine stop so you can take the sticker off first. Okay, so we're gonna close this on the screen. So I'm gonna hit the close button and I'm gonna go back to my utility stitches and okay. Okay, now on this one, I am gonna turn off. Oh, it works great for binding because because the on the Dream Machine, I use the pen for the binding. So this is the coolest way to do binding. Okay, so I am going to turn off my laser light because for this one, I don't need my laser light because I'm going to use a special stitch on the machine. So I'm just going to turn, touch my laser light. I'm going to turn it off. Okay, so we don't need the laser light. And then I'm going to tell it that I want my quarter inch piecing stitch because, you know, we put our binding on with a quarter inch seam. So I'm going to go over to my Q tab and I'm going to choose my Q02 stitch like that. Okay. And then it tells me I need to put my J foot back on. So I'm going to go grab my J foot here and we're going to put that on the machine now and take the end foot off. Okay. And like I said, I don't have any binding made, but you'll understand because we're just going to use the edge of our fabric. Okay. And we'll just go around the edges of our fabric. I'm going to trim this just a little bit because mine's a little off. So that's a little easier to see. So give me a second here. I'll just trim this off a little bit so that it's a little bit easier to follow. I just had, I like to sew. Um, so when you're doing decorative stitches, it's better to do it with like multiple layers of fabric. And if you can't do that, put some stabilizer, like tear away stabilizer behind your stitching so that you get a nice stitch. So I just use two pieces of muslin. But if you use, um, like if you if you want to do this on a, like on the bottom of a little skirt and then you're going to turn up your hem, put some pe a piece of either mesh or like, um, I usually use tearaway stabilizer because then it gives it some body and it keeps your stitching nice and flat. So that would be, but that, that's why I use two pieces of fabric, okay? All right, so I got that kind of trimmed down so it's easier. And now we need to go back in though because we need, now we need the machine to stop. So I'm going to hit the um, little the little settings button again, and that was on page three. So I'm going to go back to page three, and I need the machine to stop. So it says endpoint setting temporary stop. I'm going to turn that on now, because now what what's going to happen is the machine's going to get down close to where the sticker is, and it's going to stop so I can take the sticker off, and so I won't sew through my sticker. Okay. So definitely with binding, we are going to need that. Okay. So I'm going to hit OK. We got our st our, our uh, stitch up that we need, Q02. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you these stickers. So the, the, these stickers are very clever because if you look at the sticker thing up here, this is the stickers that came out of my machine. The stickers are a half an inch square. Okay, but guess what? To this dark line from the edge of the sticker is a quarter of an inch. To the middle where the polka dot is from either side is a quarter of an inch. Imagine that. That's the size that we need for our binding. Okay. And then if you can see, there's more little lines on here. So let's say you're top stitching and you want it to be an eighth of an inch. 
So depending on where you put your sticker, these are eighth inch marks on here. So you can also use eighth inch like top stitching, but we're gonna do a quarter of an inch. So in my case, when I'm doing a binding on my quilt, I'm just gonna put my sticker exactly in the corner, the bottom, you know, I'm gonna start like up here somewhere and I'm gonna put the sticker, I'm gonna match up the, the sides of my sticker in the corner. And so I know when I measure from here to the polka dot, and from here to the polka dot, that's a quarter of an inch. So it's gonna stop one quarter of an inch from the edge of my, the end of my quilt, okay? So when we're putting our binding on, we need to stop a quarter of an inch from the edge on when we're coming down the side, okay? So now we've got it all set up. So we're gonna go back over here and we're gonna turn on that function again. So I'm gonna go back up to my little, it looks like a pen with the little stitches on it. And I'm going to come down here. Now you notice now there it's blue because I'm in the utility stitches instead of the decorative stitches. Down here, there's our there's our feature. It's the same symbol, but it's blue this time. Okay. And in this case, it really doesn't matter which one of these you choose because it's just a straight stitch. So I just have it set at the um at the setting that it finishes the pattern, but it doesn't really matter with that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it. You could leave it on this one. It doesn't matter so much with a straight stitch, okay? It might matter with your decorative stitch because your decorative stitch, you may want it to finish, you know, before you get to the end of wherever you're going, okay? But with a straight stitch, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave it whichever one you choose. I'm gonna leave my end point on, that's that blue line. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that on. So I can see it. All right, so let's put some binding on. So, you know, when we do binding, you know, we kind of start up here. I've got my piecing stitch on, so I'm going to put my binding, I'm going to put my, my J foot on the edge of my fabric. And that's my quarter inch. So I'm going to drop my, I'm going to drop my needle in, and now I'm just going to sew forward. Now, again, remember not to put your hand over the sticker down here. And watch what it does. So it's going to come down here. We're going to do our straight stitch, quarter of an inch. And look, there's the little blue light again. Okay, now it's going to slow down. And look what it's going to do. It's going to stop. The machine stopped. And over here on my screen, it says, after removing the endpoint sticker, continue sewing. All right, so now it tells us to take the sticker off. So I'm going to pull that sticker off. Stick it up on my machine. We'll need it again here in a minute. Okay, I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to come back over here and I'm just going to finish sewing. And it's going to stop a quarter of an inch from the end. Okay, so it stopped. I'm going to knot it off with my polka dot. Not with the backup. I'm just going to use the polka dot right here. Okay, I just knotted it off. I'm going to cut it off. So it stopped a quarter of an inch from the end. I'm going to flip this over, you know, and like normally, you know, when you do your binding, you're going to do your little, you got this, and then you're going to do your little quarter, your, your flip like this, okay, and bring it straight down like this, okay? Then we're going to do the second side. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go get my little sticker, and I'm going to put it down here in this, this corner. Got to find him. There he is. And remember to put the, the dark black line horizontally, okay? So the dark black line that's right on each side, that's horizontal. So we're going to put that in this corner so we can stop in this corner. Okay. When you do binding then, since this stopped a quarter of an inch from the end, okay, when you do binding, you do start on the edge and sew up to that so that there is, there is, um, there is going to be, you're going to sew past it into the seam allowance, but then you need to have that stitching go over that. So we're going to go ahead and back up to the beginning of that side, and I'm going to go ahead and go down this side. And again, the machine, I'm going, machine's going to go down here, and it's going to stop when it gets close to that sticker so I can take it off. Okay, so now it says again, after removing the end sticker, continue sewing. So the sticker is on top of the binding. Yes, the sticker, no, the sticker is not on top of the binding, it's on the quilt. So it's on the quilt. 
so what I would do with my binding is if I'm sewing my binding on, I would flip my end up so that it can see the sticker. I just make sure that my end is kind of flipped this way when it gets close to the sticker so I can see the sticker. It's going to be on your quilt. Because if you put it on the binding, it, you might be able to put it on the binding, but you, you, it's not, to, I don't do my binding like laying out like that. So you might be able to, I just flip, I just flip my back, my, my tail back. Okay. All right. So then I'm going to take this off. And then we're going to go back and we're going to start sewing again. And then we're going to sew to the end. Because when you take the sticker off, the machine just needs to see the sticker. So, so if you flip the tail of your binding backward, it can see the sticker and see so you take the sticker off. And then you continue on with your binding. So then you'd lay your tail down for your binding. So you know that it has to be, you just need to flip it out of the way so it can see the sticker enough. Okay. And I think that's the way Judy does hers, because Judy does this all the time. I'll have to, I'll have to do it a little bit more with actual binding. So um, so then here's, you know, I've stopped. Okay. Does that make sense, Maureen? Okay, so then. Of course, we're going to start up here, we're going to do our flip, and then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to stick my sticker back down here. I should have made some binding. I'll, I might do a little video with the actual binding. So maybe I'll do that with the next um, cutie. I'll do it with this and I'll do another video with the, with the actual um, stickers. So you can see me using it with the binding because I don't know if my binding is going to lay down well enough down here that I could put the sticker at the bottom on the binding. I think I'm going to have to flip the tail back so it can see the sticker and stop. But it stops about mm, a good three inches or so from the end. So, okay. And yes, so Lynn, this is what we were talking about the other day. So this might help you with your binding. Okay. So then I'm going to go down this side. Okay, so there's, don't stick your finger over the, the sticker. So it's going to stop right there, okay? Okay, so it's going to stop. It told me, again, to remove the sticker. So we're going to take the sticker off. Okay, and then I'm going to continue on, and it will stop. Okay, I'm going to tie that off. And then I will cut, do my flip, okay? And then I'm going to put this sticker back down here. And make sure your stickers, you can, and I'm using the same sticker, so so you can um, you can use the stickers multiple times, but you do need to make sure that they really stick down. So when they start getting kind of not so sticky, make sure that you put it, use a new sticker. And this one, this one's pretty sticky yet, so you get some of these little tails out of the way. Okay, so then we'll go back up here to the top. Yeah, I'll do that when I when I bind my next um, cutie, which I will be doing, you know, like next week. I'll I'll do a video with the stickers. How about that? And then you can see me actually using the binding, and I can tell you better how to flip your tails and stuff. And I'll also ask Judy because Judy uses it a lot. Okay, so there's the sticker, okay? And it's gonna stop. It's gonna tell me to remove the sticker again. Oops. Okay, and then I'm gonna continue sewing. And it's gonna stop. Okay, I'm gonna knot it off. And cut. And then I just start, and I started right here, so we'll just keep going. So I'll start up here to the top and we'll just finish up that last little bit and we'll stop where we started. Okay, so there we go. But that's the way you would use it if you're going to sew through it. But yeah, I'll do that. I'll play with it because I haven't, I didn't have any binding. I didn't have anything to bind 
So I, went, I didn't play with it. I just did a mock finding on the edge of my fabric, but I think that would be really good. I'll do that with the Kimberbell Cutie, the next one I do, and I'll actually use the stickers and do a just do a little video and I'll post it, okay? That way you can see, but this really helps. So for those of you who are struggling with binding, you can see, let's see how it comes, you know, that's where we stopped and then we started and went this way. And that's the way it should look on your binding, okay? And see how they, here's the, here's where we stopped and then we started here and went across. And that's the way when you, when you sew your binding on. Okay. So it stopped right here and then started here. Okay. So that is that, that worked really and see how accurate it is. I was just, I thought that was very clever that they made the stickers to be the right size. So then if you need to do like an eighth of an inch, so we were doing quarter inch, but let's say we're doing an eighth of an inch, like a, um, let me close this for a second. And I would put the needle in the center. Maybe, there we go. Um, I would put my needle in the center and let's say we were doing an eighth of an inch then. I know that an eighth of an inch on my foot, there's two little notches in here. And I know that from the middle notch to the, to the outside notch is approximately an eighth of an inch. And then if I need my sticker to be there, I can put my sticker then out a little further on the edge of my fabric and use the little, use the little um, marks to help me. And then if I was going down, let's see, let's see if it works, how it works here. Well, we'll just play a little bit here and see if this works. Okay, so let's try that. And here's my sticker kind of over here because I used my eighth inch kind of mark on it. And then I know that's going to be about right there. And actually I would want that to be down. Let's say we need it to be down an eighth of an inch here. So we're going to move it down a little bit more. So let's move it in about an eighth of an inch and out down about an eighth of an inch. Let's see. So that's why they put those marks on there so that you can change the position of it and it might be easier if we did let's say let's say we're doing it up here because then we have a little something to grab onto here so we're going to do this and we're going to do find the eighth of an inch mark let's see what happens here there we go so let's see if it works so i'm gonna i've got it started and i'm gonna move it out to about the eighth of an inch we'll see what happens so it's gonna stop when it sees the sticker. Okay, then I can take it off because I marked it. I, I was do using the two lines that I'd sewn as my marks. And then I'm going to go on, keep going on, see how that how that works. It's going to go down a little further. There we go. It worked. So it went down past my quarter inch line to the eighth inch line and cut off and then I could go and do the same thing over here. I could come over here, okay? But that's why they put the little lines on there for you. But it really works great for the binding because it has the quarter, you know, you, then you basically just put the sticker right in the corner because it's the right size to be right in the corner instead of the lines, okay? Okay, my books don't remember this coming with my link. Oh, th these these should be. So the the little stickers would have been in with your um, probably in with. Well, the the Luminaire two doesn't have a manual either. So there was a baggie though that had a lot of little stickers and stuff. So you most likely have these with that, Shannon. So they would have been in the baggie with like the snowman stickers, and then these would have been in there too. Okay. All right. So what do you think of that little that little uh, stopping feature? I thought that was so cool. So they did that. They also have this then on the Dream Machine, but it was with the little pen thing. It's not quite as accurate as this is because this is using the projector camera to start and stop it. Um, and so I would be just a little bit off sometimes with my pen. The pen, you have to calibrate it to your hand so that it's it's accurate. And, and you have to make sure you do calibrate it before you try to use it. So it's kind of the same concept though, but isn't that, isn't that accurate? I was like shocked at how, how quarter inch accurate that was. 
So when I was playing around with it, I was like, wow, that's pretty accurate. Now, this accuracy here was me because I wasn't sewing straight. You can see I'm off my line a little bit, but it was because I wasn't sewing straight. Okay. So what do you think of that little part? Isn't that fun? Something, something fun and different to use. I know, aren't they smart? <laughs> Our machines are so smart, they are. Okay, so let me go ahead and get the other camera up here. And my microphone. And I'll remind you again of the special Tim has for this week. So if you, yes, so I'll play with that and see. I'm going to ask Judy, though, also, if she just, if she just flips her tail, like, I think what you'd want to do with your binding is like, you know, you're laying it on like this. Let me, let me cut this off so that it's about the width of the binding so that we can kind of play with it and we can kind of see. I think this is the way she does it because I just learned how to use this feature the other day and I haven't done any binding with it yet. So I think what she does is, you know, you're going down the road here with your binding. You know, you start up here and then you have to get down here to the bottom like this. You have to get down here to the bottom. And I think what she does is she kind of folds it back like this. I think she folds it back until she gets to the, like this, until she gets to the polka dot. You know, the polka dot has to show on the camera. I think she just folds it back or folds it up to get it out of the way and to, cause the machine's gonna stop about two or three inch, two and a half inches or so from the end. So you have room to, to fold this back a little bit. So I'll play with it and then I'll do a little video. Okay. About that, we'll do that. I'll, I'll when I bind my uh, cutie the, um, next time, I'll do that for you. Okay. So let me remind you of the special. So Tim is gonna be ordering from Baby Lock and he has these new books. So the, the new mastering IQ designer. So this has got all these really cool. Um, do I have this on your, my luminaire, which, what are you speaking of Jan? This is the luminaire that I'm showing. And did you get the second upgrade on your luminaire? I know you got the third one. Did you get the second one too? Or did you have a luminaire too? You might've had a luminaire too. I think so. I think you did because I think you had a luminaire one and we upgraded it to a two. So you should, yes. Okay, so like the, here's some of the projects in here, but this book is Mastering IQ Designer. So it's IQ Designer and and um, Design Center for the Brothers people. And this machine, this book is usually $249 and it's on sale for 20% off. So you need to get your orders in so that he's gonna order in the next couple of days, okay? So go ahead and if you're interested in this, let us know and we'll get it and you can get it for 20% off, okay? All right. Any other questions? Oh yeah. The, the binding, I'm going to play with it. Like I said, I didn't have time to do binding. I just had to learn the procedure. <laughs> so I didn't have time to do a binding. So I will do the binding, but I think Judy said that she just like turns it back so that it can see the sticker. She sticks the sticker on the quilt and then she turns back the binding so that it can see, it just has to see the sticker. It doesn't, and it stops back far enough that she doesn't have to turn it up very much. I think that's how she does it. I'll ask her though. Or she might wait to put the sticker down until she's almost to the end where it will stop it. But it seems like she puts it on at the beginning. So, and, and I think it is, it would be very accurate. So I think that would be much more accurate than me, you know, sticking a pin in there. Or in my case, I just guess. So, <laughs> so but I think it would be very, it is very accurate. And you and you, and it doesn't stop that much. You know, you can just stick the sticker on when you're ready to go down the other side. Okay, so yeah, I think so. So I'll I'll do a I'll do a video. I'll just do the video when I go to put the binding on. I'll turn the camera on and and I'll use the the sticker. And I'll ask Judy in the meantime how she's been doing it because she uses it all the time. And um, I just hadn't used this feature yet, and because I kind of guess and and I think it'd be nice to be more accurate. So. Maybe she actually puts it on the binding. She might, but I'm not sure. I think she said she puts it on before she starts the side. But if she does put it on the binding, you'd have to wait till you got it down where the binding was like flat. You know, I don't pin my binding all the way around the quilt. You know, I just hold it. <laughs> so I'll ask her how she does it. And then I'll do a video so that you know how, how she does it. So, okay. All right, so next week, let's see, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next week. I haven't decided yet, so I will let you know. So be watching the group and the Facebook page. We'll 
decide what we're going to do next week. And I will see you next week on Shields Live on Thursday at two o'clock. So thanks, everybody. Have a good day.